because the power of the church is its ability to replicate itself. Unless we know how to reproduce ourselves, then what happens is, and sadly, in my, in my, I've been in the ministry for 52 years, I've watched so many great men have kids that backslide and go into the world and, and, they're, and the, the wave stops because the kids are lost. And it's transferring that from generation to generation that allows us to be successful as the church of the Lord Jesus. That's right. Well, one of our values at Hope Church is legacy. We have five core values that make us unique. And legacy for us just means living a life that outlives you. And I'm humbled that our founding pastors, Tony and Tammy Cribb, um, we started a conversation a few years ago. They're only, he's only 63, I'm 43. So he's got a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of vision. But we started the conversation about what it would look like to enter into a succession season. He really sensed that there was a crisis coming to the church in America, and it was a succession crisis. That wow. the baton wasn't being handed to the next generation like Moses did with Joshua and so on and so forth. Yes. And he's still involved in the ministry as an apostolic leader. He teaches on Sunday with me at various campuses, but he's really stepping into a role of helping other pastors work through what it looks like to set the next generation up to lead the church in the future. And I'm just so humbled to be a part of it. Uh, my generation, um, we're, we're known for our vision and our passion, but sometimes we take our ball and we go to another court when God's called us to stay planted in his house and to stay faithful to the generation before us so that we can impact the generation coming after us. I've always had a problem when, I, when churches hire a new pastor. Because what can happen is you can have a pastor establish a church and have a DNA of a certain description and uniqueness. And then suddenly you reach outside the thing and you take someone in that's going in a totally different direction. And it takes years for the church to adjust to the new, to the new form. Whereas when a, church, a pastor is raised up in a generational um, design, what that does is it allows the DNA that has established the church and strengthened the church and put the roots of the church down to continue. And, and th there isn't that sharp cut. It's like when you prune something, you prune it so far down and then you could have, it takes years for the, sh the, 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 the roots to start shooting up into new life again in the new form. And um, I think you've got, I think, it's so wise what you're doing, so wise. Well, we have multiple generations working together. And, you know, like David said, zeal for your house has consumed me. And we've, we've worked really hard under the leadership of the Holy Spirit to move from what we used to consider a volunteer culture to a serve culture. And mm -hmm. part of that is the collection of multiple generations serving together. We have 80-year-olds and 18-year-olds um, greeting people in the house of God, leading worship together. And what that does for us is that we value and honor God's house. Isaiah said yes. it like this prophetically. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will stand as the tallest mountain of all, and the nations of the earth will flood there to worship. And we just don't feel like God's called us to wait until the end of the end of days. But yeah. now we can make His house primary in our cities and have both the Moses and the Joshua generations coming together to host the presence of God. That's fabulous. That is, uh, to hear you speak like that in, this, in these days. My, my father, uh, uh, my dad, uh, I was in school one day, in high school, just, just started high school, and a knock came to our, our classroom door, and the, guy, the, the fellow says, I'm Cameron, the headmaster wants to see you. And I thought, oh my Lord, what have I done wrong? So I'm walking behind this senior pupil and um, I'm going down towards the head, Mr. Geddes was his name, and we're going down towards his office. And I'm thinking, oh my Lord, what am I doing? So when I got to the office, I looked through the glass door and my father was sitting in the, in the principal's office. And when I saw him and Mr. Geddes, the principal, sitting, I thought, oh my Lord, I'm a dead, I'm... I, my whole life flashed before me, 13 years of age. I thought, oh, what have I done? So I walked in and Mr. Geddes pointed to a chair. He went, a little stool. So I sat, so my, my dad was here, the principal was there, and I was sitting between the two of them. And they began a restart of the conversation that they were having. And my father says, well, Mr. Geddes, 
I just feel that my son would be served better by traveling with me and, and learning the ministry than being here in your school. And Mr. Geddes looked at me and he pointed, he says, this will never be anything. He will never amount to anything. And my dad took me out of school to come to America to sing while he preached. And, and from day one, he put in me the DNA that when the time came to transition from his generation to my generation, I had gone through every circumstance with him. I looked over his shoulder. I learned how to, to, to conduct ministry, how to conduct yourself, how to, how to, to be in, in ministry. And when it happened, there was bumps and hiccups and, and terror moments that we went through. But the DNA that had been planted in me by my father made it a much easier transport, trans, transfer of, of generational ministry. If he just said to me, okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> I don't know if I could have done it. And then to have someone like yourself being, I think you were eight years in the church before this transition. Is that correct? Is that, is that my memory? Yeah. That's right. So eight, eight years, years I was there serving as an, as a, an associate pastor. I, I was called lead pastor when he said, I want you to come be our lead pastor. I said, well, where I come from, lead pastor means senior pastor. Uh, but he was the senior pastor and I led the staff and helped lead under his leadership, the launching of our Simpsonville campus. And he just quickly pulled me in to leadership. He shared yeah. his spheres of influence with me. He pulled me into the pulpit. And so he really took seven and a half years to create a, a runway for me. So by the time I received the baton, this last August the 30th, when we had our succession day, um, I was already running full speed and so was he. So the baton handoff, was successful because he opened the door and let me in. And I, I'll tell you this, I learned a lot from him. Just like Joshua watched Moses yes. regularly pitch the tent of meeting and would encounter the presence of God. And Joshua as an assistant would just watch him have those encounters. Yes. Um, I watched Tony Cribb over all these years have these encounters with God. I'd go to his office and knock on the door to ask him a question and I would find the door cracked and he would be on the floor praying in the spirit, worshiping. Wow. And I knew right then that I was receiving something that wasn't built by human hands, but this was a submission to the presence of God, the house of God. And so there, subsequently there was like a fear of God on me that I didn't want to mess this up. God had been building something for three generations and yes. I didn't want to come in and try to polish it. Because we, we really sense that God is in a season of not replacing churches, but the churches that used to be shiny, that garnered attention from cities and nations, are now going to be replaced by the attention of God looking at the weighty churches. Wow. And so regardless of size, God's looking for a house that will host His presence. And I'm telling you, I, I, so I got into ministry during the exponential church growth movement. There's a lot of great things with that movement, but one thing I've noticed is that you can build a mega church in these days without the Holy Spirit. If you do yes, things you just can. right, you have a certain yeah. level of excellence. But unless God builds the house, those who labor, labor in vain. And for so 35 true. years, our mission has been surrounded by the presence of God. The centerpiece of our house is Jesus and the movement and work of the Holy Spirit. And so I just realized the legacy for me was going to be easy. If I kept my heart right, yeah. I stayed in a posture of honor, and I hosted his presence as the primary function of our movement. 